All right, so I want to go over, uh, you know, a comment or two here. Uh, Roddy, Roddy K, 1993, says, Stop hoaxing below, mentioned Eric D. Uh, wasn't he the atheist you mentioned? No, no, the atheist uh, that I was talking about in that video um, was just a Facebook friend, somebody I'd known uh you know when i was a teenager uh, just uh somebody he was a little bit older and he ran around he was running with um you know uh some of the older kids uh or older than me i was a young fella hanging out with, you know i was 16 hanging out with uh 20 year olds and uh, 24 year olds it, well back then when i was 16 if i remember correctly uh, all you had to do was be 18 to buy alcohol, and I was, uh, I was, a lot of people knew who I was back then, so it was pretty easy to to, uh, to uh, have older friends, of course, you know, and drinking and doing all that sort of uh, various illegal activities, and anyways, it was just an old friend, uh, the atheist, the, the one that I would call a super monkey and I thought it was funny but yeah he was offended but I mean if he's being honest if you believe in evolution then you believe you are a monkey a super monkey you evolved from regular monkey into a super monkey and then you're gonna eventually evolve into a super Martian I mean, just be honest about it I, I don't know why that would be offensive but Oh, uh, he got mad. Ooh, did he get mad? And so he he set out to try to prove the Bible wrong, and it was when he got to the part, well, your stupid Bible says the earth is flat. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're a moron. I, you know what? Yeah, I, he was probably right. I am a moron. I certainly was, right? Because I tried to justify the Bible. Uh, with the heliocentric model and if I'm being honest I couldn't do it I couldn't do it you know and I, I thought to myself if I'm gonna be honest about this I gotta know I, I gotta study this I gotta know for sure I, I can't leave any doubt for anything because I know the truth is in the Bible you know I'm at that point 10 years Christian and I'm at that point where I got complete faith in the Word of God. I got to find out. I know I can find out anything that I desire that can be found out. And I, I fully believe that I could find it out, but it, it required much study. Because you got to understand, uh, I didn't grow up in a church, none of that stuff. And it wasn't until I was 31, so I was a fool for over half my life you know a damn fool I really was and so I had a lot of catching up to do I had a lot of learning a lot of reading a lot of studying to do to catch up and so that's what I set out to do you know I mean it's amazing you could read and study um, and then after realize that there's a whole nother there's a whole bunch of stuff you could really dig into anyways but the you know the simple truth um, of the scripture is salvation through Jesus Christ, right? And whosoever believes in Him uh, should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the simplicity of the Bible. All you have to do is have faith. Now, once faith has come, then your eyes are open and you begin to understand, and then you can go seek and find those things that you desire to know and no man can know it all but boy it sure is interesting to go and learn new things and so that's what I enjoy doing and so that's what I set out to do and that's when I realized hey you know what the Bible's right I knew it the whole time I knew the Bible's right and this worldview of heliocentrism is wrong. 
I mean, it's wrong, wrong. I, it's it, it's almost as if it takes the Bible and completely formulates a theory contrary to everything that's written in the Bible. And that's, if you think about evolution, well, all right, so evolution says man was created in the image of a monkey. Now, flip to your Bible, and what's the Bible says? What's the Bible say? That man was created in the image of God. Let us make man in our image. All right, so if you're made in the image of a monkey, as evolution says, you can therefore conclude that God is a monkey. Now, I don't think this sort of thing should be taken lightly. I really don't. So you're going around teaching children that God is a monkey. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. And, you know, just because they're subtle about it don't mean they ain't laughing about it, right? Just because they're subtle about it don't mean it's intentional. Those people that put together the theory of evolution hate God. All right? Make no mistake about it. And uh, what a wonderful theory. If you want to make fun of God, tell everybody, hey, you, weren't, you were made in the image of a monkey. And then that way when they're children and they pick up the Bible, they put two and two together, the smart ones, right? They put two and two together and they see God must be a monkey, right? And so anyways, we could, you know, we had some back and forths on that for a little bit and then I had to take a break and study the Word of God and of course, uh, you know, as I told the story, that Psalm 19 uh, verse 6, it, it's like an angel was singing out to me saying go and look look at this look at what God has to offer and so I went and I looked and Psalm 19 verse 6 his going forth talking about the Sun is from the end of heaven of the heaven is from the end of the heaven so this right here suggests I mean it says that heaven has an end that's completely contrary to the heliocentric model and a circuit unto the ends of it talking about the Sun the Sun has a circuit the heliocentric model says no it's the earth that has a circuit and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof you cannot hide from this verse if you're being honest and you gotta be honest I mean you've got to be honest to yourself if nobody else and it's quite apparent to me that once again I was made a fool it's like uh, all throughout my life I, I just let everybody make a fool out of me you know from believing that I was a monkey a super monkey you know end up believing all these strange theories and strange doctrines just made a fool out of every single time and that's what the world will do to you if you put man before God if you put the words of man before the words of God you'll be exposed and made a fool of and that's why I say you got to be honest you got to be honest and you cannot willingly reject the Word of God. You got to take it for what it says. And if it's if it's contrary to what you believe, you have to re-examine what it is that you believe. All right. So 
Uh, no. So I just wanted to say, clarify that now this uh, Eric D. Eric uh, Dubai was uh, a young man who you know you'd have to understand. I think the moment in time. You know, I was putting out uh, like a video a day, about four or five videos every week, and you know, I get ten. If I got 12 views in a day, that was that was great. Because the way I saw it, I, I reached 10 people. And 10 people saw this. Eventually, somebody's going to get it. But you can imagine. If you can imagine, you know, months. And months doing this. Uh, you know, I don't want to say I was frustrated, but I was like, man, you know. I wish somebody else would pick up on this so I don't have to be burdened with this and you know going point by point by point showing you know who's who's ever gonna look at it uh, you know that this is true <laughs> it's true be it, it not 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 because what you see in the world but because of the Word of God and so I try to use the Word of God and what we see in the world, of course, the horizon line. It's a big deal, right? And why is the horizon line a big deal? Well, you go to Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You go outside, you take a look, and what do you see? Heaven above, earth below. Man, to go beyond that is to go beyond the Bible. It's right there. It's right there. The very first verse in the Bible. It's telling you that we live on a plane, on a flat earth, or what I like to call a bumpy earth. Right? Because it's not straight flat, it's bumpy. So, anyways, uh, you know. Eric, Eric Dubai comes along. He's, he's like, hey, man, do you mind if I use some of this stuff in a book? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know what? Do whatever you want. Do whatever you can. I encourage you to take this information and share it with others. And boy, oh boy, did he. He did a great job of it. You know, the fact that he's an atheist, is it's unfortunate, but what can I do? And it's only, I can't open his eyes. I can't, you know grab him around the neck and say you got to believe in Jesus Christ well I'd like to but that it's not gonna work that way right he's got to figure that out on his own right and and this is kind of the trouble I felt from the very beginning of becoming really popular because I, I was I was foreseeing this um, possibility that hey this thing it's gonna blow up and I don't want to be at the top of it. You know, you take a look at Kent Hovind, uh, how he's become the face of creation versus evolution. Now he is sort of trapped into what he taught, you know, what was it, 40 years ago, what he began to t teach. So he's kind of in that box. And he's sort of stuck in that box because he's the face of that box. And I, you know, this is to me, the flat earth thing, this is just something, one of the many things that I want to learn. And one of the many things that I want to teach. So I, in, in a sense, I wanted to hand the battalion off to somebody, anybody, and just let the whole world know about it. I don't want to be the face of nothing, right? So I encouraged Eric Dubai to go and tell everybody have that conversation and that's what I encourage people to do have that conversation so I believe it was um, two years after you know getting this thing started is when I I backed out for the most part and it began to explode and oh, that was great and you know everybody's talking about it fantastic Fantastic. Now I can take a back seat. I can move on and move forward on to other things. All right. 
and so I don't have to be cornered or boxed in to this one particular thing. And I gotta tell you that on one hand it's great that so many people started talking about it, on the other hand I cringed because I could see all the people that were making it up who didn't really know and understand. I could see that they were phonies. I could see when people are trying to be different and trying to be unique and and cool, right? And not being genuine. I can see it. I can see it and uh, you can't there's nothing I can do to correct the whole world on. I can just tell you the truth and uh, show you the truth and when other people go nuts and, uh, and to me you think about uh, I, I better not say nothing okay so anyways yeah I'll just bite my tongue on that so uh, so what Eric Dubai did was great and uh, you know there came a few others uh, after him I think uh, if you if you look at Eric Dubai as somebody that's phony, uh, their phonier guys came after him, guarantee it. Um, but you do have to credit Eric Dubai for uh, gaining uh, popularity and getting the conversation going. I think he did a wonderful job at that. Uh, something that I didn't want to do and something that he's done very well. Right is to really go out there and sell it. I'm not a salesman. I'm just after the truth. That's it. Okay. All right. So, or can you tell the story or do a, a P P.S. public service <clears throat> update that after Eric that Eric after all asked you to use your video and that's where it blew up. Okay. So I think I. I did that. So you know, you know, I really, I know he's an atheist. I know, and he teaches some of the goofiest things you'll see on the internet. And he, he himself might be one of the goofiest ones you'll ever see on the internet. But uh, you know, again, I think he he did a marvelous job of getting the conversation going. Okay. So I don't want to be too hard on the guy, but if I'm being blunt, unless he believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to hell. He's a child of the devil. You know, whether he echoes the truth or not. Whether he gives his own version of the truth, and it's very close, or not, he's going to hell if he does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I want to go down here. Stop hoaxing. Somehow I ended up... Is this the same guy or different guy? No, different guy. Somehow I ended up on Eric Dubai's channel. I kept watching and reading the comments where he had an answer for every question. I was so embarrassed that I would erase my browser history. Eventually I was convinced the flat earth model made sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, man. That's great. And, you know, uh, um, again, when I... I would say when you're when you have questions and you're giving answers to the questions the answers ought to come from God otherwise what's the point you know if uh, if uh, you know uh, you're adding things I, mean, I don't want to get into different things but uh, let me use one example okay I'll try to use one example okay so when I first started on that journey uh, so what I did is like I explained I I studied the Bible I sort of wiped the blackboard clean and started fresh completely open to whatever the Bible was saying and then you know doing all these word studies uh, really helped to open my eyes and give me understanding and I saw that uh, we are not a planet at all that's a big deal now alright so now 
I'm uh, uh, sort of curious. Uh, you know, after I've really started to exhaust my word searches and my study of the Bible, I started to look on the internet to see what others might be te teaching. Once I'd formulated what I believed was strong, I wanted to then compare what I believed and what I've discovered and what I know with what other people are teaching regarding this. And of course the Flat Earth Society. And I thought, okay, let's see what they're teaching. Okay, so one of the first things that jump out to me is the Flat Earth Society taught that an Earth was a planet, a flat disk, and it was moving upward, and that would account for gravity. All right, so I, I looked into it quite a bit, and what I what I noticed was that the suns had taken over the business, if you will, in that I, I think actually the suns taught differently than their father. And I don't believe, I, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know because I'm not that old, but I just have a suspicion that the father did not teach a moving pancake upwards. I think the kids added that to be cool. That's what I think. Yeah, I could be wrong. But I don't believe that was even part of the teaching of the founder of the Flat Earth Society. All right. And so you add in this idea of a disc moving upward to the Flat Earth and you make the whole thing look stupid. Now what a great way to deceive the masses all right and you make this uh, uh, part of the popular teaching you teach children that well back in the old days uh, the stupid people the ignorant dumb people they all thought the earth was flat and then smart people came along and said no it's a planet and now we're all smart because the smart people came and said it was a planet. And that's how you deceive people, man. That's how you, you start with the children. Right? And there's a problem with that because it's not based on truth. You know, it's based on propaganda. It's based on lies. It's based on brainwashing. Right? There's really no other way to look at it. Are you telling me nobody brainwashes nobody today? No. It, just because you're not able to identify what brainwashing is, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Brainwashing is teaching children things that are not of God and forming their beliefs at a very young age. And that's why it's so dangerous, I think, for parents to hand their children off to other men that have strange doctrines and teach strange things because what they believe, all these weird things that they believe, they're going to push it on their on your child. And what's more important than your child? And in a perfect world, you would be teaching your child what you believe. You would be sharing the knowledge and information that you've gained throughout your life. Instead, you're handing your children off to perverts that don't believe in God at all. That's dangerous. Okay. So, anyways, that's one example. And then, so another example was I found uh, some guy that would uh, he would he, he was on the YouTube and he was teaching, uh, you know, King James Bible verses. He his argument was that the Bible is wrong. It be and he says that the, well the Bible teaches a flat earth and you know he would go to Isaiah 40 and, and so on and so forth right and he would make a big deal out of the word uh, whatever word that was in Hebrew you know, I don't know if you ever heard these people they say well in Hebrew this word is means gobbledygook and so you know you know what I'm saying that 
they say, well, the, in Japanese, this word means poo-poo or whatever. But, you know, you can do that with any word in the English. Take it into another language and claim this word means something different. In other words, what they're saying is you can't trust what your Bible says. You can't trust the Bible that you hold in your hands. You got to go to a foreign language that you don't have any clue about to learn what God actually says. To me, that's just insane. Now, you got to be out of your mind. All right, if you don't believe, if you don't understand the word in English, you're not going to understand it in a foreign language that you have no idea about. So I recommend learning <clears throat> the English language. Huh? Well, you, you're not an expert on the English language. Uh, very few are, if any. I, if. Is anybody an expert on the English language? We're all learning the English language. And don't pretend like you know it all, because you don't. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, this guy, this gentleman on YouTube, he was... The only argument that he had was this verse and I think one other one I can't think of right now. Was it Job something or another? And so I, I took a close, close look and I pondered these. He stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. So, you know, growing up on the river and doing a lot of camping as a as a kid I fully know what a tent is I know full well so if you go outside at night and you lay down on your back and you look to your left and then look to your right assuming you're not in the woods you look up and you see the heavens above you and that's exactly what it's like. It's They're spread out like a curtain or a tent. And, and if you were to go up, for example, uh, you know what I'm talking about when I say I really pondered this. If you go up, if you could float all the way up, you know, 150 miles or whatever, and you look down and you look to the left and you look to the north and you look to the right and you look to the south you look all around you you see the circle all the way around you see a circle if your max distance is you know for example uh, you know whatever 200 miles. Okay, let's say your max just, you know, if you want to make it 4,000 miles. Okay, fine. Your max distance, the very furthest you can see is exactly 4,000 miles. It'll be exactly 4,000 miles in all direction. And if you could draw a line, it would be a circle. He that sits upon the circle of the earth you gotta look at it from his vantage point right just as if you were up in the air right and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers right that doesn't mean we're grasshoppers it's like we're at, it's like we're grasshoppers because we're so small from his vantage point right it doesn't mean we're grasshoppers it doesn't mean the earth is a planet it's not there at all all right and then we can go to Job and ponder what Job says and all this and that but you know the bottom line is there's nothing in the Bible at all that says the earth is a planet nothing there's nothing at all that says the earth and the Sun were made on the same day in fact when we go back to Genesis 1, 
we see that there was night and day, evening and morning before there was the sun. Let's see, let's go here. All right, and we notice it's not until the fourth day that God made the sun and the moon and the stars. So for three days, there was night and day, evening and morning, and no sun. Now, Albert Einstein and all the experts and geniuses, you know, <clears throat> you know, all the people that came up with a heliocentric model and that support it and to teach it and all the theory of relativities and, you know, um, Copernicus and all this and that, you know, the ones that really talk it up, the ones that teach it and all this and that. What they tell you is that the, there was a big bang. Boom. Everything exploded on one single day. Uh, smaller than the head of a pen or whatever, you know, and and there was a big explosion and all this stuff turned into, you know, suns and earths and planets and moons and all that nonsense, just from something that came from the size of a pen. It doesn't make any sense. And now what they'll say, well, that that explains the creation, and that you read in the Bible. No, it don't. Not at all. Not at all. Not even close, Jack, because there is light and there is darkness. There is night and there is day. There is evening and there is morning. Before there is a sun, a moon, and stars. There is a heaven and an earth, but there is no sun moon and stars now look if you want to say the Bible's wrong God don't know nothing that's on you Jack that's on you all right and there's is there anything in the Bible that might point to you let's see what Isaiah 29 just pick a random verse here it says surely you're turning of things up Upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work, for shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? Now let's use this here. Shall the thing framed say of him that framed it? He had no understanding. Are you going to say that God didn't understand how things were made? Huh? Is that what you're going to say? I mean, isn't that what they're saying when they claim the Big Bang Theory? Well, God didn't understand that there actually was a sun and a moon and a stars and a heaven and an earth all at the same moment in time not three four days later well you know what there's another interesting verse is God a liar God forbid yeah let God be true but every man a liar as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judge. Right there, man, bingo, the light came on, told me right there, hey, it doesn't matter if I'm the only one in the world that can see it. I know it's the truth. And the truth will prevail regardless of majority opinion. Now, I, I, I had been arguing that for, for quite some time, that majority opinion does not make truth. And then here's the connection, right here. This is what 
gives me the confidence to go ahead and talk about those things that are very unpopular right because I know God is true I know God is real and I know God is on my side when I speak the truth and so I went at this thing with full confidence right and uh, the only other thing that I saw back then at that time was a comedian who would make great observations and he held up these paintings and said is this a planet and then he would uh, show that no this is something I did and how would you know how would you know when you see these pictures from NASA how would you know if they're real or not real great observations and of course uh, this guy from Canada um, he uh, the very funny guy very smart guy uh, uh, the you know the the only thing was that at that particular moment in time he had sort of given up it to me I got the impression that he'd given up on the stand up comedy stuff that he was doing and he was more it, to me it looked like he was more focused on uh, paintings his name was Math Boylan I think I think I got that right right Math Boylan does that sound right so anyways he um, uh, did a great job of you know of demonstrating that how would you know how would you know if that was real or not because you yourself you didn't go up there and take those pictures it's just what other men are claiming that they've done and so it's interesting you go to the Bible right? I'm telling you I, I I lean heavily on the Bible so in First Thessalonians 5, it says, Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. So if you can't prove it, then don't consider it good. Prove it. Right? So when it comes to, uh, you know, this claim by NASA that they sent out all these little, you know, spaceships or whatever, and they're taking pictures all the time and all that sort of stuff, wandering around uh, heaven, taking pictures of stars, uh, how would I know if that's real or not unless I'm up there snapping the pictures I can't know for sure that those pictures are true and uh, to be quite honest with you I I don't I don't believe NASA don't believe NASA at all and so one of the first things I showed was how the NASA logo has a tongue that looks exactly like a serpent's you know that our logo has you know the serpent's tongue of course NASA said oh that's just uh, rocket fuel or whatever rocket smoke as NASA's way of blowing smoke up my butt your butt all, all of our butts because I'm telling you that is a serpent's tongue and it's interesting here you know you study the Bible I and mean, here you go to Isaiah 14 you notice the only time the word Lucifer is mentioned and the entire Bible is Isaiah 14 right and it says how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations for thou hast said in thine heart now, I've done a, a numerous videos on this talked about this quite a bit and I think people willingly overlook that and um, that guy from that Mike what's his name from the Bethel Church he's one of them I don't want to get no arguments with nobody or nothing about this it is what it is for thou hast said in thine heart this does not at all mean that Lucifer ascended to heaven it doesn't say that at all you go to um, Oh, goodness sakes. There's a parallel verse. And. Oh, goodness sakes. Alright, so now. This tells you how rusty I am, right? Obadiah, yeah. Parallel verse. And thou. It says right there. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. So. Um. If you're not able to make the connection here, you're not going to be able to see it. But right here, when it says, Thou hast said in thine heart, 
In other words, they think that. They didn't actually do that. In their heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This is a parallel. or Obadiah 1 verse 4 is parallel to this. There's no difference. There's no difference at all. It's the same mentality. It's not, and I, I get it, you know, if you believe in UFO aliens, which that guy from Bethel Church does, you're going to look at this and you're going to say, oh, they're actually going to outer space. No, they're not. It doesn't even say that. And they're not doing it anyways. This is a matter of pride. Right? These guys are so prideful. These guys are so big headed and so egotistical. They believe that they will be like the Most High. And yet God says, Thou shalt be brought down to hell. Now, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. All right? but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This again is about pride. This is what we're up against. We're up against men with these great imaginations deceiving and being deceived the people all over the world. Now, this whole world is full of these vain imaginations, these false ideas, and it's corrupted the whole world. You know, the idea of evolution, you know, the idea of space travel, the idea of, you know, magical, uh, uh, you know, mysterious uh, enemies, bad guys roaming around, blowing stuff up, and, uh, of course, this, uh, you know, unseeable uh, pestilence that is sweeping the world, coming out of the woodworks, magically appearing and devastating the whole world. You know, these sort of things, man. It's just the whole world is full of this corruption that stems from wicked imaginations right and you go back to before the flood of Noah and you consider that God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth Are you gonna tell me the wickedness of man is not great in the earth today come on man and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually is that not what we're witnessing today? You think about this, Isaiah 14, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Are you, you, you're not making the connection here? Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You're not seeing the connections here? You know, this has been going on for a long time, and it's still going on today, and we're up against it. And are we up against it or what? I mean, come on, man. If you're not seeing it, you know, what can I say? You know, I encourage you to read the Bible. And not just read it, but have faith in the Bible that you hold in your hands and know that it is from God. When you have that faith, that's the key. That's the key to understanding. It's not about how often you read it. It's not about having uh, secret manuscripts written in foreign languages, you know, that sort of thing, or these extra biblical books that nobody knows about, you know, secret books that uh, give you special knowledge and that sort of weird stuff. No, it's not about that at all. It's about actually believing 
the words you hold in your hand and believing that those words are from God to you having that kind of faith is the key to understanding it is the key to wisdom all right it is the key to knowledge wisdom and understanding when you have faith your eyes are open when you do not have faith your eyes are closed there's a veil upon your face and you can't see but once you turn to the Lord your eyes are open the veil is lifted and now you can see and now go out and search it all starts with faith okay now uh, I was gonna make this is gonna be a five minute video and I think I've gone over five minutes so uh, didn't I talk about Kent Hovind earlier you know I love Kent Hovind I do I, he's got some great stuff that counters evolutionism and I think one of the most interesting uh, points that he made or not maybe not one of the most but an interesting point that he made is that you notice how people call they call it evolution and then um, they'll call it creationism I, if I'm remembering this correctly right they you know the creationism versus evolution whenever they add the ism it sort of weakens it and by not saying evolutionism and only saying evolution it gives the word strength gives the idea of strength because it's evolution versus creationism you know that putting that ism on it weakens it and just having a straight evolution it strengthens the word and it's manipulation is what it is because in all reality evolution is dumber than dog do all right and the creation account in the Bible is from God and I would go back to the you shall be known as the potter's clay shall he that framed it say of him that framed him he had no understanding Are you t you're gonna tell God that God don't understand what's going on I mean come on we see examples of this every day all the time and it does drive me nuts and uh, that's why you know we got to stay steadfast we got to stay strong we got to stay convicted in the Word of God and read the Bible every day you think about uh, Matthew 6 where it says um, when Jesus tells us how to pray give us this day our daily bread the daily bread is the Word of God every day it takes five minutes just to read one chapter of the Bible I mean this is a point I, I make a lot uh, don't take me th this the wrong way but if you got two hours to spend watching a Netflix movie surely you can take five minutes to read one chapter of the Bible and I'm telling you man by reading the Bible every day it's a good habit to get into and then your eyes will be open to something new every, every single day now you things will be revealed to you that you never even imagined and it's amazing and uh, highly encourage that so um, maybe I'll get into this another time here uh, I did this video divorce is a sin uh, it, divorce is not a sin uh, that's, it dry, that drives me nuts for people to say oh divorce is a sin man it's not and it's a way out and people need a way out and Moses granted them a way out so the the this whole thing about remarriage and I can get into that some other time but I want to keep that separate from hey look if you're fretting because your heart is broken and you have just you had a, the greatest relationship ever and then uh, your spouse just pooped all over it and your heart is broken and you're in misery and then you've got people saying oh you send when you divorce like it's your fault man everything is your fault what are you doing man divorce is not a sin divorce is something that had has to be done it's in a way out you know it if people have those sorts of troubles in their marriage and they're able to work it out that's great man. not everybody is able to work it out not everybody is willing to forgive not everybody is willing to reconcile 
and so there really is no alternative sometimes you just you have to deal with it right and I, God doesn't want us to suffer the devil does so who are you to tell people that well you got a divorce so you're a sin and you're struggling in life because of your sin no that's not the case at all people struggle with divorce because of what happened while they were married and now their heart is torn they're hurting and who the hell are you to come along and start stomping on hearts of those that hurt come on man look life is tough enough why are you trying to make it tougher on others all right it to me I'm so <laughs> I'll I won't say no more on that okay I'll, uh, I'm gonna end this video right here dude why have you been a war dude um, good video dude uh -uh, no I still don't know the name of that intro of that Rosa Jimenez appreciate that comment there I'm gonna hold on to that until I figure it out alright if it comes to me it comes to me otherwise it doesn't but uh, you know I'm against the word dude 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 I'm against it I'm against the word dude dude see dude here's the thing dude see dude when I was young dude and I used to use the word dude all the time dude you know what I mean dude and so I used the word dude and my friends used the word dude and we were all a bunch of dude you know just you know kids being dudes dudes being kids kids being dudes 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 we had a thing is dude uh you know when i was a child dude you know when i was a kid dude i was a dude when i was a dude i was a dude when i was a dude now i've gotten older and now to me uh it's a little bit disrespectful you know when you're a kid it's cool to be a dude dude well I'm not a kid anymore all right I think it's disrespectful to call somebody a dude in particular if you're not real close to them I find it disrespectful that's why I'm against it too many people using that word that's why I'm against it okay alright who cares I'm against it that's all there is case closed that's why got it okay